Designing is like creating a beautiful and user-friendly world on our computers, phones and other devices. Just like when we build a house, we follow certain rules to make it comfortable and appealing. The same goes for designing digital things. These rules are called the principles of designing and they help us make websites, apps and interfaces that people love to use. Think of these principles as a guidebook for designers. They tell us how to arrange things, choose colors and make everything easy to understand and interact with. By following these principles, we can create designs that feel natural and intuitive for users. Whether it's organizing buttons so you know where to click, using colors that make you feel happy and relaxed, or making sure things are easy to read. Principles of designing help us make our digital world a better place. Having said that, hello everyone and welcome to this video on designing principles, where we'll talk about how these principles apply in the UI UX field. But before we begin, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates from us. First of all, let me take you guys to the agenda. We'll start with how to build UI, under which we'll see designing principles, learn about balance and alignment, contrast, hierarchy, rhythm, proximity, color and space, and lastly, why to use wireframe. The last agenda is what factors define UI design. With that, let's get started. So basically, as you can see, that graphic design is a craft where professionals create visual contents to communicate messages. By applying visual hierarchy and page layout techniques, the designers use typography and pictures to meet users' specific needs and focus on the logic of displaying elements in interactive designs to optimize the user experience. So basically the principles of user interface design are intended to improve the quality of user interface design. So the design should be organized in such a way in so purposefully in meaningful and useful ways based on clear consistent models that are apparent and recognizable to the users putting related things together and separating unrelated things, differentiating dissimilar things and making similar things resemble one another. So basically we are going to discuss about some principles that will play a very vital role while building an interactive UI. So let's move to the next slide. The very first is the balance. So balance is very important as it is the distribution of the graphic design elements such as shapes, text boxes and images of a design evenly throughout a certain layout. Designers can choose between a balanced design or a balance that is a dynamic layout. In the context of graphic design, balance is of three types basically. So the very first thing is the alignment as we know that we the alignment is very necessary for each and every document that you are going to create. In the same case, while creating the UI, uh, interactive UI, alignment is very necessary. It is a very important aspect. So, this fundamental aspect of a design which creates a visual connection between the elements such as images, shapes or blocks of text, it helps us to develop a sharp and ordered appearance by eliminating any distortion within the layout that can have a strong impact on the users. You can go through the PPT and you would be able to get alignment in more detail. Moving to the next slide, we have contrast. The important things should be highlighted, they should be seeking more attention. So basically contrast is an important principle in any form of visual art as it guides the customer's attention to the key elements of a design. It is essential for maintaining the distinction between similar elements in a design, thereby enhancing a layout's overall legibility. Moving to the next principle, we have hierarchy. This method combines two aspects, dominance and priority, giving extra weightage to the certain elements of a design over others. It helps brands convey their message to the audience by focusing on a particular element of the design. Moving to the next principle, this is rhythm. So basically, repetition of certain elements such as logos or color can help make a brand easily recognizable and strengthen the overall look. So rhythm brings together different elements to create a more organized and a consistent look. Moving to the next slide, we have proximity. The proximity helps in decluttering the overall design by creating a relationship between the related elements. It enables the audience to have a pleasant overview of what they are looking at. 
they are offering a good user experience. It forms a visual connection among important design factors such as color, font, type or size, ensuring the layout is balanced to form a perfect design. Then we have color in a space. Color plays a very important role. Choosing the right color can help define the tone of the design. A space refers to the area around or between the various elements of the design. To make sure the things are not looking too cluttered, the designers can choose from a wide range of color combinations for the backgrounds and text of the layout. Moving to the next thing is wireframe. Wireframe is a very important factor, is a very important phase that you need to take care of while building a GUI. So a wireframe is a web page layout that shows what interface elements will be present on important pages. It is an essential step in the process of designing interaction. Before the creative phase of a project begins, a wireframe is used to give stakeholders and the project team a visual picture of a page. In order to make sure that the vocabulary and the organization used for the site fulfill users' expectations, wireframes can also be used to build the primary and secondary navigation. As mentioned on the screen, wireframes are useful for a variety of things, including connecting the site information, architecture to its visual design by displaying routes between the pages. So as we can see on the screen, moving to the next slide here, if you have the design, if this is the aim of your final product, so before designing, before getting this uh, final design as an output, as a result, we need to create wireframes. So as I mentioned the definition now, let's see what exactly is the wireframe. So here you can see two images right now. This is the final product that we are expecting and this is a wireframe. Let me zoom in. So here basically, what do we have? In the wireframe, what we are defining, we are defining the structure, we are defining the content to be provided and the hierarchy with a lot of functionality, the size of each and element that we are going to provide here, the space between them and the behavior as well, like how these boxes will be connected to one to another and it will lead somewhere to our final output. So that is mentioned over here, the structure. How will the many components of this website be assembled? What will be shown on this website? Information hierarchy. How is this data arranged and presented? How will this user interface function? What kind of interaction does it have with the user? And what is its behavior like? Let's move to the next part. So here this is a rough diagram of creating a wireframe on a page. You can go through it. And coming to this image that you can see here, so this is how you will be creating the connections between the pages, the space between the boxes and the different elements and uh, many more, the dimensions as well. Next, we are moving to a term called prototype. Okay, so prototype is uh, early sample model as written before the release of the product which is basically used to test a concept or the process. So as it is mentioned, it is a term used in a variety of contexts, including semantics, design, electronics, and software programming. A prototype is generally used to evaluate a new design. They allow you to take a concept and present it to the user. So basically, there is a thought process like uh, going to the user and asking their requirements and like how they are going to use the application it is a bit it is better like we can provide a prototype to them so that they can practice on the same thing and then we would be able to get to know the mindset of our users towards the product like how they will be using our application and how we can make it more better so moving to the next slide you can see we have something called mvp mvp is basically a uh, theory a concept called minimal viable product so basically a notion from the lean startup methodology known as uh, minimum viable, viable product emphasizes the importance of learning in the creation of new products and mvp in easy term is the iteration of a new product that enables a team to get the most verified data about customers with the least amount of work whether your customers will actually buy your product is how you may validate your learning. 
so a fundamental tenant of the mvp concept is that you create a real product which may be as simple as a landing page or a service that appears to be automated but it is actually entirely manual that you can provide to the clients and watch how they actually use it watching what people actually do with respect to a product is much more reliable than asking people what they would do that is why we can it is a better to go over the prototype and to see like how you can make your application better according to how the user use it so now is the time to know what are the factors that define a user experience design so let's go ahead and see the seven factors that are very important in case of ux design so here the very first is valuable as you can see the second one is accessible the third is findable fourth is useful fifth is usable sixth is credible and the seventh is desirable as well so here let us discuss all these factors in detail let's move to the very next slide so here what it says useful your content should be unique and meet a specific need so basically just think about a scenario why would you want to introduce a product to the market if it is not valuable to someone if it has no purpose it will probably find it difficult to compete for consumer attention in a market crowded with useful and purposeful goods it is important to remember that useful is a subjective term items may be considered important to remember if they provide non practical benefits like enjoyments or aesthetic values therefore even if they do not allow a user to achieve a goal that other find significant a computer game or culture pc game may never less be considered valuable so that is why taking care of useful factor is really really very important coming to the usable which says here the website must be simple to navigate which means the site must be easy to use so usability is the ability for consumers to use a product to successfully and efficiently accomplish their goal people at least for the time being only tend to have two hands there's a computer game that requires three sets of control paths and unlikely to be playable if a product is not usable it It still may succeed, but it is less likely. Think of the first generation of MP3 player, which lost market share to be more useful iPod when it was introduced as an example of a device with poor usability. Although the iPod was not the first MP3 player, it was the first one that was actually successful. Now coming to the desirable, that is emotion and admiration are evoked through the use of the image. identity brand and other design components so basically both skoda and porsche are automakers they both share some similarities in the terms of usefulness usability accessibility credibility and value as well however porsche is far more coveted than skoda this is not the imply that skoda is bad after all many automobiles have been sold under the, that name However, given the choice between a new Porsche and a Skoda for free, the majority of people would choose the Porsche. Design uses branding, image, identity, aesthetics and emotional design to communicate desirability. The likelihood that a user will boast about their possession of a product and inspire design in other users increases with how desirable it is. Coming to the findable on site and off site content must be accessible and locatable that is a very simple thing okay so basically findability relates to the notion that a product must be simple to locate and in the case of digital and information product this also means that the material included there and must be simple to locate all potential buyers of that product will not purchase it if it is not readily available so you would probably find reading a newspaper to be an extremely frustrating experience if all the stories within it were given page spaces at random rather than being arranged into the sections like sports entertainment business etc for many products user experiences depends on findability as well coming to the accessibility 
so accessibility content is required for people with disabilities so basically sadly while designing user experiences accessibility frequently gets overlooked offering an experience that can be enjoyed by people with a wide range of abilities including those who are disabled in some way such as those who have hearing loss poor vision mobility impairment or learning impairment is what accessibility is all about companies frequently view accessibility design as a waste of money because they believe that the portion of persons with impairments is relatively small according to the census data at least 19% of persons in the US that is the united states have a disability and it is likely that this percentage is higher in less developed countries keep accessibility in mind when designing the user's experience and this is a very important factor coming to users must be able to trust and believe what you say this factor is called as credibility basically the user's capacity to place their trust in the service of or product you have offered is referred to as credibility not only must it perform the intended function but it must also be durable included accurate and appropriate information and last for a fair period of time so if the user believes that the product designer is a liar with false motive then it is almost impossible to provide a positive user experience since they will go elsewhere to do their business so these are the factors that we need to keep in our mind and plus these are the factors that affects the ux design mostly just a quick info guys intelipart offers advanced certification in ui ux design strategy the program offers complete advanced certification training for those wishing to pursue a career in ui ux design strategy the course curriculum is designed and mentored by the leading faculty at iit guwahati and is specifically designed for aspiring learners who want a career in this domain you can check out the testimonials on our achievers channel whose link is given in the description below without a doubt this course can set your career to new heights so visit the course page link given below in the description and take the first step towards career growth in the field of ui ux design